Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Second Chances. Today, we're taking it to space. Yes. It's time to talk about Starship Troopers. Woo! Yeah. I swear, this movie is like the best. I This movie, Second Chances was created for this movie. That's what I've decided because it's so awesome in so many ways. I don't know how anyone could dislike it because it's great. And this is why. Can I just get into this real sure. quick? Sure, get into it a this little bit. This is why. Star Trek Troopers is amazing because like one person could say like this is like an amazing like satire on fascism and xenophobia and war. And another person could say it's the most lowbrow, terrible sci-fi action movie ever. And they'd both be right. Right. Which is amazing. I mean, I enjoyed the sort of very Paul Verhoeven like signature like TV stuff uh -huh. like yeah w like very much like in RoboCop where it's just a very sort of jaded cynical view of what society and you know just pop culture will be like in the mm -hmm. future I like that very much and then I'm like okay so this is a world where they've mastered intergalactic space travel and yet they're firing the same guns we have now basically <laughs> yeah and all of the weapons are the same yeah. and everyone from Buenos Aires is white now sure. <laughs> Let's get into it then. What, so the movie came out in 1997. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Paul Verhoeven, uh, who was had come off of RoboCop. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Well, this this was this was, he was, near he was actually the end. the end of a ten year <laughs> yeah. ten yeah. year run for Paul Verhoeven that so, was remarkable. RoboCop, RoboCop, Total, Total Recall, Recall Basic, Basic Instinct, Instinct. Showgirl. <laughs> I was going to say, this is post-Showgirls. This is which, post is, which is a oh, yeah. shock, Girl. finding that out. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, chronologically, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> right out of the gate, I feel like this movie was not being taken seriously because it was from the director of Showgirls. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. oh, this guy's still around. Which might have um, been like why I never even bothered watching. I mean, I don't really remember exactly how old I was, but I know my brother was a teenager, and he saw it with all his friends, and they were like, dude, coed showers. Yeah. And I was just like, that's not enticing me. Which Paul Verhoeven directed that scene in the nude. Paul Verhoeven yeah, yes. and the DP were both completely naked. Paul and yeah. his Verhoeven, swinging his in the Ver wind. His Ver was Hooven. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually didn't see it immediately. Like, I didn't see it when it came out in theaters. I didn't see it until after seeing um, uh, Harold and Kumar escape Guantanamo Bay because H. Rob Corddry's character kept on talking about, uh, you know, Neil Patrick Being Harris yeah. and how much he loved Starship Star Troopers. Troopers. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I guess I got to see this now. Well, I saw it in the theater, and I loved it in the theater. <laughs> and I saw it last night, and I loved it last night. Yeah. Right. I love and, that movie. And I, I saw it I saw it in theaters, too, because it was like prime, like, Clint's going to the movie every Friday and Saturday night kind of territory for me. Yeah. Um, and I saw it in the theater, and, and even then, it was like, this is an undeniably bad movie, but yeah. I had a blast mm -hmm. watching this. And this is actually one of the reasons why I, I like to do this on, on Second Chances, because, like, at the time, I was like, oh, this is just a bad movie that's fun. But I think there's a lot more to unpack about this movie yeah. that, that a lot of people don't give it credit for. Yeah, I, I think, you know, mo mostly what's really interesting about this movie is, like, there, there's some really kind of heavy, interesting stuff like I said earlier about propaganda, fascism, yeah. xenophobia. So you gotta remember, you know, Paul Verhoeven grew up like in a uh, in Holland uh, during German occupation in World War II. So when he was like six years old, he was like attacked by basically a bunch of na Nazi sympathizers. He grew up seeing uh, bodies all over the place, blood all over the place, Nazis all over the place, which gives you a good idea of sort of like why his movies tend to be so violent and right. immediate, because that's sort of like how he grew up. In fact. Yeah. Yeah. But also, it's like you know, he he has a lot to say about fascism. He has a lot to say about that, and 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 I think that stuff really comes through, especially in these amazing commercials. Well, and let's let's just start walking through the movie a little bit because the movie opens on a propaganda commercial. Yeah, on a piece so, that was my favorite part of the movie was the various propaganda and news pieces. Pretty much anything that was on TV within the context of the movie, I was on board with. And and that was that actually first scene you're talking about was a shot for shot remake of a scene from Triumph of the will. Oh, really? Yeah. I think one of the mistakes in that you can make while watching this movie is to think that the, the, the propaganda film part of this movie ends when those commercials end. Exactly. Like, I think if you watch this movie and look at everything as a very, like, well thought out choice, mm -hmm. like from from the bad acting, the stilted yeah. acting, yes. to how handsome and white and perfect <laughs> everybody's teeth are, yeah. and to like all the everybody's wardrobe is just these bright primary colors. They look like a like a cartoon strip essentially. Mm -hmm. Like and to even how dumb their tactics are. Yeah. Like it really like we're gonna attack bugs 
with like get a dozen guys around and fire a thousand rounds out of a machine gun and that's going to kill a buck. Yeah. And that's our tactic here. Yeah. Even to how dumb and and pig-headed the strategy is in the actual war. Like everything throughout the movie is a propaganda piece and it serves to show like how stupid this society really is. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you watch the movie in that light, it's a really scary sort of prescient uh, piece of science fiction, I think. It, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, it's funny because um, I don't know if I got all of that when I first saw. I think when I first saw as a kid, I just liked the action I and the co-ed showers and all that right. stuff. And yeah, watching it again, it's like even down to like Casper Van Dien. Like I remember when uh, I saw him originally, I was like, oh, this guy's such a bad actor. And you look at him now, and he looks like he's on like the poster for the Third Reich. You right. know, he's like the most beautiful blonde, you yeah. know, perfect bone structure guy. I like that he's sort of the bimbo of the movie because yeah. because he's like the bimbo that's like dating the. The this really smart kid in school that that's like going places mm -hmm. and and she's going places so he follows her yeah and she's he's all felicity. like oh I, I yeah she's all like oh I I didn't think you'd follow me here um, bye I am um, I don't think that my problem was necessarily even like bad acting or or like the action or anything I think it was just boring to me like I had to watch this over like four days <laughs> because and I was like cleaning my apartment and because I was just very bored. I don't know, I feel like it was just so redundant and maybe that was part of the art of it, as you're saying, where it's just like, okay, so now they're going to empty several machine guns to kill one bug, yeah. maybe not even. Yeah. It's just like, how many times do I have to f***ing watch this sh But I think I think it also works better as a group watching experience yes. because then you kind of all get to shout at the screen and, and yeah. you know, talk yeah, about how I, stupid I things are. I almost feel like it wasn't bad enough to hold my interest yeah. and it also wasn't good enough. It was sure. just such a middle of the road, like, I've seen cheesy movies like this before and this isn't that interesting, but I did, again, enjoy, like, the sort of cynicism about the way the world is and the way the world could go, which is just classic Verhoeven. And I think taking that energy into the rest of the movie mm -hmm. is is an interesting way to watch it. Like every costume in the movie, even the drill sergeant at the beginning in boot camp has like a weird little SS kind of logo. Yeah. Like they incorporated Nazi stuff into all of the, uh, um, even even like the, the sky marshal giving his speech, it's oh, like yeah. shot, like it's shot up at him and he's at this podium with big eagle behind him. Exactly. Like it's very yeah. third Reichish. And I don't think it's an accident either that no. like when he gets fired, he hands over the range to a, it's a white man handing over the range to a black woman. Yeah. Like I don't think it's an accident doing that. I think like watch this movie knowing that everything in there was a very specific choice with very specific meaning behind it. Like I think it, I think it's a really interesting movie. Oh, I don't disagree that they made some choices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think um, it didn't do it for me, I guess. It's just the bottom line. I was just, I think maybe it was overhyped in how bad it was. I was just like, it's not that bad. And it just yeah. wasn't good either. Well, for me, for me, this movie is really like a hate fuck. Because, because the thing is Go that, you know, on. there are parts of it that are amazing and parts of it that are just really ugly. And parts of it that you're like, why am I here? Yeah, but in the end, you're really not going to regret it. I mean, maybe you will. But, but in the end, for the most part, you're not going to regret it and you are going to orgasm. You are going to, you will have Still orgasmed waiting. by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, there's just so much I love about this movie. Uh, one of the things I love is like a, a, a bunch of the military good guys are played by sort of classic film bad guys. You I got, love like, Clancy Brown. Clancy yeah. Brown, of course Michael Ironside is amazing. Dean Norris from Breaking Bad yeah. is in there. Uh, and so I, I love the casting in that regard, I think it's really fun. When you watch it now, I feel like it's a lot of the stuff you see on like Adult Swim. This like absurdist, insane, like violent, ironic, like to the next level All type of the thing. Goop. In oh, this yeah. Movie. oh yeah! Both human and bug is is remarkable. Yeah. Th there's a scene in the movie. I don't want to give it away because it's really funny. But there's a scene where like somebody says something really horrible about the enemy, and everyone gets up and cheers and smiles and high fives, and you're like. This is a like yeah. fascist like 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 almost like musical. To counterpoint that, every time anybody is like super gung ho, it's like yeah, we're gonna kill some bugs. They're the first ones that die. Absolutely. Oh yeah, like, oh, yeah. and they die horrifically. Or if you're a coward. coward, yeah, cowards yeah. Well, also. Coward, yeah. It's it's the guys. It's uh, it's the guys that sort of have a weirdly pragmatic approach to what they're doing mm -hmm. that make it through the movie. Yeah. You know, everybody who's like yeah, everybody who's totally bought in to the fascism, mm -hmm. they die pretty. Horrible quick. deaths. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe I have to look at it through the lens of when it was released. I feel like maybe we've come so far in that sort of subversive, um, uh, jaded sort of sensibility. When you mentioned adults, I was like, maybe I've just seen too much Archer 
<laughs> to be able to like look at this and see yeah. it as something fresh because I'm looking at it as someone in 2016 and not 19 the late 90s you know yeah, I mean even the prescience of like you know all the all the commercials it's like would you like to know more it's, it's just like YouTube yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. it's like click here to see more of our yeah. stuff I it's, loved that yeah. um, you know I think Looking at the whole thing as one propaganda movie with propaganda films within it is a much more like way to prime someone for it, perhaps, mm -hmm. particularly because of the time that's passed and the sort of reputation it has. But I still don't know if I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, let us know what you think of Starship Troopers down in the comments. Are you going to give it a second chance? We already did T. First chance. First chance. Probably not, not getting a second. Not getting the second one. But. Sight. But. Sight. You can see how somebody might give it a second chance. I give it maybe like four and a half bugs out of ten. Okay. Okay. Look, point is, it's good science fiction. Watch it like it's good science fiction. Watch it like they're all making like real live adult choices uh, <laughs> and that the whole thing is one big propaganda thing and it's totally worth watching again. But let us know what you think about it down in the comments. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to know more. Uh, and we'll see you next time on Second Chances here on Cinefix. Watch it naked while hate f***ing, and you might like exactly. it better. If you, yeah, man, if you can get a two-hour hate going. Two hours and nine minutes. Yeah. Might as well have Starship Troopers oh. on. <laughs>